A scriptural prayer for signs and wonders, next. The program you're about to watch is part of a free audio series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled The Message, The Miracles, and The Multitudes. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code MMM23 at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We are doing a series that I've entitled, The Message, The Miracles, and The Multitudes. And this is a scriptural pattern that's seen from the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. It's carried on through the early church, and it continues today, or it should. And by not using this as a scriptural pattern, as a pattern of ministry today, we're missing out on some things that I believe would make us much more effective. And we prove this point over and over from the scriptures in this series. And you can get all the notes on this on my website. Go to the home page, look for study notes, click that button. And this should be at the top of the list, the message, the miracles, and the multitudes. And you can have all the points in the scriptures that we've put together for this series. Now this is I want to call this an original series. This is something that, that, uh, that just jumped out at me as I studied the Word of God and, and read some other books. And it was so profound that uh, I made a series out of it. And we have this available in audio. This is a four-message audio series on USB. It's called The Message of Miracles of Multitudes. And then this is the CD version of that series. You can find this on our product page. And uh, these are $24, but the, uh, the downloadable version of this is free. And you can go to my website and choose the MP3 download selection. And at checkout, that would be a $16 charge, but at checkout, when you uh, see the coupon code, you do MMM23. If you'll put that in the coupon blank, then you can download that for free. And that's already been set up. We heard back from our web guy. It's ready to go. You can get your free downloaded version of that. And uh, this is material that I don't know where else you can get. As I said, uh, it's, it's something that, that I have put together because it spoke to me so loudly. And I believe it's time for this. And I believe that our ministry is going to experience this as well. And so I wanted to, to kind of lay the groundwork for what's coming in the future with this teaching. And a lot of what I, what I, I, I drew from in this series is in the, is, was in a book called Christ the Healer. And this is a classic book on healing written in the 1800s by F.F. F. Bosworth. And if you don't have that book, you should have it in your library. It's available electronically on Amazon. And I, I believe you can still get the paperback version but it's called Christ the Healer. And, and, and Bosworth was an evangelist in his day in the 1800s, and he, he evangelized, but he began to implement the healing ministry in his evangelistic services, and he was astounded at the difference of, of, of the response. His crowds grew exponentially because he began to offer healing uh, along with the gospel message. And if you want to compare that to today, we're offering the gospel message, but I don't see the emphasis on healing that Jesus had, that the apostles had, or that even Bosworth had. And, and, and his Bosworth's argument in this book is, is that this is what attracted the multitudes. It wasn't the message alone, but, but it was the healing that was offered and the healing miracles that drew the people. And I'm going to quote him here. And this is, again, F.F. F. Bosworth from the book Christ the Healer. He said, We have found in our revivals, as soon as the public finds out what this same Jesus is doing, they come from the Methodist quarter, the Baptist quarter, the Catholic quarter, the Christian Science quarter, from the Unity Quarter, from the Spiritualist Quarter, from the Jewish Quarter, from the Poor Man's Quarter, from the Rich Man's Quarter, and from every quarter. Multitudes hear the gospel and give their lives to God who would have never even attended the meetings if there were no healing miracles to reveal His compassion. 
So he's, he's saying that not only does healing not take away from the gospel message and from the work of, of evangelism, but it adds to it. It is, it is what people are wanting. And if you want to draw people, you have to, you have to offer them something that appeals to them. You don't have to compromise to do it. We're not going to offer the world sin so they can come and, and, and hear the gospel. We're not going to compromise and meet them in an area of, of, of compromise morally or any other way or financially. We're not going to do that to draw people. What he's saying is we can offer healing and that's something they want. It's something we have. And one of the reasons people come from all these different quarters is because their message doesn't include healing. They're, they're not offering that in the cults. They're not offering that in the mainline denominational churches. They're not offering the message of healing and healing miracles. But we, as New Testament Christians, nothing special about us. We just believe the Bible. We believe that the gifts of the Spirit have not passed away. We believe that it's God's will to heal the sick. We believe that healing was included in the atonement. If we're going to believe all of that, we should present that because that is what people want. Now, I'm going to get into this more as we get further into this study, but I'll, I'm, going to, I'll, I'm going to say this today. We are not going to attract a large number of people with, with our favorite teachings or our favorite doctrines. In other words, uh, if, you, if you came out of the, the, the charismatic movement like I did, you love the gifts of the Spirit and the move of the Holy Spirit. You love that. Well, we could present and put on a Holy Spirit meeting, a you know charismatic uh, renewal meeting, which uh, has affected in, in days gone by millions of people. But you could put on a meeting like that today, and you know what the world would do? Find something else to do. That doesn't appeal to them. They're not interested in that. And you could even get deeper and say, we want to have a discipleship meeting. We want to teach you how to go deeper into God and become a greater disciple for Jesus. Did you know the world would make plans to stay away from that one. They would block out their calendar so they couldn't go to that meeting because although that may mean a lot to us and we all want to go deeper, they don't want to go deeper. They don't even want to get their feet wet. They don't want to stick their toe in. So they're not going to come to a discipleship type meeting. You could have uh, if you really want to run people off, have a holiness meeting, okay? Come and find out how to be more holy. Man, now, now there are some people that that would appeal to, but you could probably count them on one hand. A holiness, are you kidding me? You want to tell me what else to give up in my life? So although it would be good if people were more holy, they're not going to come to a holiness meeting, not, not the multitudes. That's just not going to appeal to them. Now, what they need and what they want many times are two different things. And I'm not saying that we should offer drugs to drug addicts to get them to come to church. Certainly not. But we do have something to offer that they want. <laughs> and Again, you could have a Holy Ghost meeting and tell the whole world, hey, you can come get filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues. It's free. Come on in. We'll get you filled before you leave. Man, they would stay away from that in droves. Uh, because that's, now that's changed my life. I wouldn't give it up for anything in the world. They don't have any knowledge of that. But do you know what they do know? They know if they're hurting and they want to be free from pain. They know if they've got an incurable illness and they like to get rid of it. They know if they're bound by addiction or demon power and, and they can't seem to get free themselves. When you begin to offer them something like that, that appeals to them. And frankly, let me just say it this way. This is about the only thing we have as full gospel, Holy Ghost Christians. It's, all, it's just about the only thing we have that they want. <laughs> and we're not offering it. We're, we're not offering it. We're trying to get them in by our personality or our... Our, our ability to perform on a stage or, or present a message in a way that grabs their attention or, or social media bites or, or through, you know, screens and PowerPoint and whatever else 
people use today. And, and all of these methods are, are usable. I'm, sa- I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. We need to do the best we can. But, but really, if you want to be honest about it, they're not going to come to us to see special effects. They're going to go to Hollywood for that. They're not going to come to us to learn about success and finances. They're going to go to the financial gurus for that. They're going to, they're going to follow Elon Musk and Bill Gates and, 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 and the founder of Amazon, Bezos. And they're not going to come to us for these things. And, and yet we're not offering what's really in, at our disposal, which is the healing message and the healing ministry. And I'm saying this because I'm preaching to all of us. I'm, I'm preaching to me. I want to lay the groundwork and put this into practice. In fact, I want to come to a city near you. I would like to have these meetings in public forums. I would like to present the message and the miracles and just see if it still works today like it did in the days of Jesus. And uh, just spoiler alert, I've already done this to some degree and I can tell you it does work. So uh, it's time to, to, to go back to the Bible principles, the Bible methods, and implement those today. You know, that's simple, but, but I believe it's a key. Now, we can expect these things to happen. And there's, there's a definite scriptural precedent for us to desire and pray for these things. And then as we do, put action to our prayers. And one of the things I'm doing is going on this program. I'm putting the best stuff that I have on this program. In fact, I've been on a a multi-year journey getting my teaching out and getting it into uh, 30-minute segments in this program, my series. It's all going to YouTube. We're out on different outlets, and I could use help. You know, uh, I know you probably don't like to hear about money, but I'm not charging you a fee to watch this. It's presented freely. It's without charge, without fee. You don't get fined if you don't pay. Uh, It's, it's, you know, the gospel just doesn't work that way. And and if you think about it, and I've done a lot of thinking about it, because we're we're at a point here where we've got to have increase. In order to go to the next level, just to maintain where we are, we need increase. And I felt like rather than just shut it off and quit and go back to traveling, I would rather give you this opportunity to help us. Uh, And I'm not going to whine. I'm not going to cry. I've seen that all, you know, years past. Preachers get on and cry. If you don't give, we're going off the air. That's not what I'm saying. I'll go off the air without crying. (laughs) I'll just fold it up and go somewhere else and preach to someone else. But I believe this is the will of God, and I believe it's right to present this to you and give you an opportunity to give we're, in, we're on platforms that we don't personally have the money to pay for. And we have to depend on other people to invest and pay for it. It's kind of like this. You know, in most cases, you, you offer goods and services for a fee, for a price. But I'm dealing in sacred truths. These are priceless. And the Lord doesn't want you to pay a price for the revelation that I'm giving you. I got it freely. Now, I had to study and separate and do all the things that's necessary to hear from God and to deliver a message, but it's free. And He didn't want me to charge for it, so we really don't. You say, well, what about all that product? Well, I charge for product, but we put the money back in product. We haven't made any money on product for years. It all goes back into that, and we make more, and we've been in the red for years on that. So, yeah, we, ch- we charge for the postage and for the material and the labor, but it's not like it's a money maker. Basically, what we do is free. And, you know, it would just tarnish the entire process if I charged for my messages. <laughs> Think about that. You know, if you'd like a pre-owned, slightly used sermon, we'll give it to you at a discount. You can send in $15, and I'll send you a message that will partially change your life. If you have a real problem, and if you really want deliverance, that's going to cost you more. And we have financing available. We can get you free from deep, dark depression, but it'll cost you $10,000. If you'll apply this every day uh, for, for one month, you'll get free from depression. Send your $10,000 check. You know, that would just be so cheap. And, and, and to, to, to take the sacred truths of God and deliver them that way, God didn't want it. So what he decided to do 
was say, I'm going to give it to you freely. I'm going to raise up ministers that are going to be stewards of these mysteries. They're going to, 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 to get them and put them into a usable form, and then it's going to be given freely. And then after that, if the people want to respond, then they can give, and that's what's going to finance the, the, the export of this truth. It's free will offerings. And, and it's amazing to me how people get mad when we give them the best we have. I never hold back. I try to give you my best every time. And it's free. I don't charge anything. And if, if it was a restaurant, you know, at the end of each program, I'd say, here's your bill. <laughs> and if you'd like to leave a tip, we'd be happy to have it. And you'd have to fill it out and send it back to pay for your meal. But in our case, if it was a restaurant, at the end of the program, I'd say, now, you enjoyed your meal. Did you like it? Is there anything else I can get you? I'm happy you liked your meal. I just want you to know there's no charge. No charge. You can just get up and walk out and, and, and just with our blessings. However, if you'd like to leave a gift, an offering, you're free to do that. And you know, people get mad. They, they get mad that you, it's not like I took the money. I just give them an, an opportunity and they get, there you go talking about money again. Well, it, it, it isn't free. And no restaurant would let you eat without talking about money. No store would let you shop without talking about money. There's no good or service you can get in this world without talking about money. And no one gets mad at the waitress when she comes and brings the bill. And it's like, how could you ruin a perfectly good meal with a check? What's the matter with you? Take that check and get out of here. I'm not paying for this. I mean, no one would do that in a restaurant because they're obligated to pay. And here we are giving away the gospel, giving people an opportunity. And I know that not everyone's going to give, and that's not what it's about. I just need enough people to give to pay the bills. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Some of you guys wouldn't give. If I said, if you don't give today, I am going to burst into flames. And you go, is there a free video of that? Uh, can I get that in DVD, uh, the bursting in the flame thing? And they'd be calling in. Do you have that bursting in the flame on, on, on camera somewhere? I mean, and that's fine. I know that not everyone's going to give, but we do need to have a core of people to respond and say, you know what, I'm going to invest in something that God is doing that I feel good about. And I can promise you this, we don't waste money. We've had to do a whole lot on a whole little. So we do know how to make your money count. And if you're one of those that have made a lot of money the hard way, you worked for it, you earned it, you disciplined yourself, and you don't want to throw it away now, good for you. I agree with you. Put it into a ministry that's done the same thing. We value your time. We work hard. We discipline ourselves. And we wouldn't be here today if we hadn't done that. So maybe we're a match made in heaven. And if you believe that, give today. The methods of giving are on the screen. You can do it by QR code. You can become a partner just by doing the text to give and hitting the recurring giving uh, check mark. You'll be a monthly giver. We'll see that. We'll send you a partner packet with a gift and a note. We'll stay in touch with you. Uh, you can do that for $25 or $50 or $100 a month. We even have a couple of $1,000 a month partners. We would like to have a couple more. And if that's you, uh, just text that number or call. If, and and, and as, as I always say, if you want to give $100,000, forget the screen. I will come to your house personally and uh, we'll go out to dinner. How about that? And if, I'll pick it up. Don't worry about the screen. That's, that's, that's uh, not necessary. So anyway, uh, let's go on with this teaching. The, the signs and wonders and miracles are something we can not only expect, but we can pray for. And I have scriptural precedent for that. Peter and John prayed for this lame man. He arose and, and at the gate called Beautiful at the temple. He began to leap and, and jump and praise God. And uh, then they were threatened. They went back to their own company and they prayed this prayer. And we can pray this prayer. We're going to pray this prayer today. They said this, Lord, look on their threats. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. So there's the message. They didn't stop there. They didn't say, you know, they don't want us to preach. Help us to keep preaching. Give us the bravery, the boldness to continue to preach. 
They did pray that, but they kept praying. They said, by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy child, Jesus. Well, if they could pray for signs and wonders and healings, so can we. And if they could expect that to happen, then so can we. We should expect it. We can pray that same prayer today. And, and did it work? Let's go to Acts. I'm going to have to turn there. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. This is the prayer. They ask God for signs and wonders and healings. Man, do we need those today. Can you see the need? Let's just forget about what you've seen in the past and all of the excesses and the or, or, or the under-emphasis, but let's just say that we could clear the slate, look at today f from a, a, an objective perspective. What would real signs, wonders, and healings do to, to a world that we're living in today? I, I believe people would flock to s something real, something they could put their finger on and say, that's real. They've been lied to. They've been deceived. You know, Satan has used this instant access to information to fill people's heads with lies and doubts and fears. And, and it is time for the truth. The truth has no competition. If, if we could present miracles that could not be denied, healings that are documented, it would give people something to point to, to say, I found something real. I mean, I, I just have such a heart for people today. Think about this. They're telling young boys and girls, are you really sure that you're a boy? Say, are you a boy? I'm a boy. Are you sure? You know, you don't have to be. And I mean, if they can sow doubt about your very sex, nothing is off the table. Everything is in question. What we must provide the world is something solid that can't be denied, that can't be removed. And we begin that by substantial, substantiated healing miracles. And we follow that up with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Both of those things are supernatural. They're backed by God. They cannot be removed by mankind. If, if the devil could have removed it, he'd have done it by now. If people could have removed the gospel from it, they would have done it. It's impossible. It's here to stay. But now we're the agents. We're the, the, the hands and the feet. So they earnestly prayed this prayer. Grant unto your servants boldness to speak your word, because we have to have the message. Number two, stretch forth your hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done. We must have the miracles. And then notice what happened in verse 31. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So the first part of that prayer was answered immediately. They began to speak the word of God with boldness. What's powerful about that is when the pressure's on, they had just been threatened with their lives to not preach or teach in the name of Jesus. After that prayer, they had boldness and they had no problem preaching and teaching. You're not going to stop. You can make it illegal. You're not going to stop the gospel. But we do need that, that spirit of boldness. Then in Acts chapter 5, and, and if you go down to verse uh, 12, this is what happened after the preaching with boldness. The message, num verse 12, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. That's the, the miracles. So that prayer was answered immediately, and it was answered not on them or, or outside of them. It was answered through them. They prayed for boldness and miracles. They spoke with boldness, and they performed the miracles. In other words, if they had said, I'm praying for boldness and for miracles, and I'm going to go sit over here and watch God do it, nothing would have happened. But they went forth in the power of the Spirit, and they preached the Word, and they invited people to be healed. And God confirmed uh, that prayer and the Word and His calling with signs, wonders, and miracles. Through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And uh, verse 14, here it is. 
We're talking about the message, the miracles, and the multitudes. Here's the, here, here's the third part. Verse 14, And believers were increasingly added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women. So, so I mean, once again, you see the same process. It's so clear. And I've got more. There's more of this throughout the book of Acts. Um, and I, I'd like to say I stumbled on this, but I, I, don't, I didn't stumble on it. The Lord is highlighting this and spotlighting this because it's time for this. And, and so uh, if you agree, pray with me right now. Let's pray this for our generation. Man, if it worked for them, I'm jealous. I am jealous for our day, for our world, for, for the people that are, that are lost and, and completely confused today. Uh, they don't know the right from the left as far as the truth goes. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you stretch forth your hand to do signs, wonders, and miracles and give the church boldness. Raise up men and women of God that are full of boldness and full of the Holy Spirit to preach the Word of God, to preach the gospel without an agenda, no ulterior motives, not trying to just simply build a kingdom or draw people to themselves, but to bring people to Christ. I pray for boldness for men and women of God to preach the Word. And I pray for signs, wonders, miracles, and healings to be done in the name of Jesus in these days. I thank you for all of those in this audience that have agreed with me for this prayer. And I thank you that all of us will watch these things come to pass, even as they did in the book of Acts. They prayed that prayer, and they saw the answer. I believe we're going to see the answer. It's not too late. It's certainly not too late for God to move and to show himself strong in the earth. And I believe that's what we've all been preparing for. And uh, I know you believe that too. Thank you for being with me today. We've run, come out, we've run out of time again. Don't miss the rest of this series because we've got more proof uh, to, to give you in the days to come. Until then, remember this. The good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. It's difficult to get the message of Jesus to the multitude without miracles. This series reveals why we must expect miracles and how to use them to reach people the New Testament way. Call our helpline at 918 918- 749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. A couple of programs back, we did a book tour. And if you missed that, let me just give you uh, the highlights. I showed you six books that I've written. Uh, this one's called Prepare to Meet Your Maker. Uh, this one's called God Likes Faith. It's an overview and an introduction to the message of faith. This one, Living in Stressful Times Without Losing Your Mind, talks about spiritual growth dealing with the competing emotions of fear and anger. This one is called Living With No Regrets to help people get over their past, whatever they uh, may be holding them back. And this one's called Good News, and it's so good the bad news doesn't matter. And then another one on the gift of the Holy Spirit, what it is, who it's for, and how to get it. I'm offering this entire package of books for $50. Now you'll never find them that cheap again, but we are offering them this month. Call our helpline, say, I want the book bundle, and we'll send you your books today.